coming. Now, I don't think of all the time we've been doing this show, that we've had this animal on the show, and I don't know how many people in the audience know what this animal is. I'm trying to do bigger and better things on the program after yeah. all these 27 years I've done this to you, Johnny. It's the Wolverine. And, uh, a Wolverine? It's the only tame Wolverine that I know of in the world. It's Steve Crucial from That's how you done this. But seeing one is rare enough, but seeing two, Wolverine, pretty unusual. Yeah. Steve Crushell has spent 25 years with Wolverines. I was on a quest since I was a kid to learn more about this mysterious animal. And the more I learned, the more questions I had. Steve was a budding wildlife filmmaker in the 1980s when he first came to Alaska from Minnesota. Over the years, he's worked on more than 100 films, from the feature Never Cry Wolf to the documentary series Planet Earth. From his home just outside of Haines, Steve has grown a 60-acre wildlife refuge where he cares for injured and orphaned animals and teaches visitors about Alaska's native species. But for Steve, right from the start, it was all about wolverines. He's one of the few people in the world to raise them in captivity. Yet it's been 16 years since he's had kids. Getting wolverines to breed is notoriously difficult. It's just another part of their mystique. A wolverine birth in captivity is just a few notches below a panda birth or a polar bear. And so it's a big thing, it's a big deal. This year, Steve has high hopes. On his compound, he has two males named Skippy and Spark a female named Star that he raised from birth, and Jenny, another female on loan from the Alaska Zoo. As Steve has been able to raise three litters, the zoo is hoping his facility may offer Jenny a better environment for courtship. And she did mate, but that's still no guarantee that she'll actually have kids. If she is pregnant, she'd be due to give birth any day now. Steve keeps constant vigil. There's something going on in there. This is 10 days now. It's taking a toll on me. I, I've been nervous and stressed out. It's torturous. I don't know. There's no remote camera in this den. I have no clue as to what's really going on. So I'm going to go out and try to feed and see if I can get more clues. At last, two of the rarest babies in the world. But they aren't Jenny's. His old female, Star, is the mother. Maybe it was the introduction of Jenny that spurred Star, after all these years, to show her dominance and give birth. But we can only speculate. The delivery was Star's final act. She died just moments after. And now Steve has two kids without a mother. I'll start with this one. He and his son, Garrett, will have to step up and become Wolverine parents. The demanding Wolverine kids. Steve will have to draw on all his years of experience to raise these two. In the back of his mind, is a daunting statistic. Out of the 11 wolverines born in American zoos last year, only one has survived. Goodness. This one here is named Banff. And this one's Jasper. Banff and Jasper. Wait your turn now. <laughs> not polite. No, they're getting full now. 
I'm going to clean them up a little bit here because that's very important. So I'm just cleaning them off here like mommy would do. She'd lick around their faces, make sure there's no, no mess. It's something we do. This cleaning and feeding is still going on about every four hours around the clock. So we're not getting a lot of sleep. I'm not getting a lot of sleep. The Wolverines are getting a lot of sleep. In this tub, I change and I put uh, uh, fresh moss from the forest in there almost every day. And also a little bit of uh, tree branches and such, like this, this hemlock. These are psychological uh, security blankets for the wolverine. These, this kind of bedding is very important. Give them a little bit of privacy. For four hours now, I can do something else and relax. Our load of Wolverines. They have to be able to run free. They have to be able to experience life like they would in the wild. So we take them to these different kinds of habitat that they would normally be seeing with their mother whether it's the river or up in the forest. Trying to film these wolverines out here in this mosquito-infested forest is almost impossible, but I think we'll get a few shots here and there. Uh-oh, into my power cord. Don't you chew that in half. No, no. Wolverines are so inquisitive, they get into everything. I mean, I have lost power cords. They just chew them in half. I mean, in just a few seconds, it's broken. What are you gonna do? But, um, what would be the worst, and I shouldn't even bring it up, but if they open up a film can after we've already shot. But uh, so far, so good that way. You sometimes will see, you know, they're crouching down, they're showing their teeth, and that's what they do to each other, and that's what they do to their enemies. All of the play has a purpose, really. And to be part of that, of course, is quite insightful because they're sharpening their skills for hunting, stalking their prey, or defensive behavior, you know if they were stocked themselves. And you see all that, it's all wrapped up into one session of play. Well, they like this. They're orphans, so I have a profound responsibility to give them the best life possible. I don't want them to, to ever be bored, otherwise I'd feel like I've, uh, I've failed as a guardian. brings big changes to the Crushel household, but the pace hasn't slowed. It's impossible to stay one step ahead of a wolverine, even in captivity. Always a dangerous thing to bring a wolverine into a cabin. All my gloves. So I'm missing one glove, and now I've got an idea of where it might have went. I might. Uh-oh. You weigh, uh... 38 and a half pounds now, Jasper. My goodness, your teeth are getting big. Yeah, it's just been uh, a three ring circus every day <laughs> working with these Wolverines because they've got so much energy, you know, and uh, they got to have something to do all the time. Some people might think that this is a bit uh, wacky. But, uh, you know, how else are people going to understand this elusive animal? The biggest weasel of them all. 
So what is your first impression of a wolverine? Fierce. 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 Yeah. Vicious. Vicious. Golly, geez, I don't know if I can bring them out after hearing all those adjectives. What about you? That they're what? They're cute. They're cute. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's, you know, I'm with you on that. That's how I feel about them. The only reason I have these wolverines is for ambassadorship, to educate, to enlighten. <laughs> this is Banff today. Look at that claw. Oh, I would say maybe that claw is a quarter inch long. So one wolverine needs a lot of territory. They find it here in Alaska. Before, they were kind of, you know, a couple notches below Bigfoot. And now we can have a little bit more of a clear picture of what this creature is all about. At eight months old, Jasper is testing the waters of adulthood and testing his boundaries with dad. It's give and take all the time. They seem playful, they seem like they're benign, that they won't hurt me and all, but they could. They're still a wild animal and I still have to work within their rules. Jasper and Banff are nearly full grown and Steve can only manage them one at a time now. Yet both will have his unyielding attention for the rest of their lives. I've got almost 60 acres here, and of course, the, uh, the border is just endless wilderness. So what, what they have now is what they'll always have here, I hope. Another study season is wrapping up for Audrey, and it's been...